Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over the water to Denmark once again and we're going to have a look at another gypsy brewed beer. But this brewery is probably one of the less well known gypsy brewers at the moment. But um, we're going to have a look at a beer from Beer Here. And these guys were recommended to me in terms of Danish beer by both Morton at Ull Boutiquen and the guys at Barley Wine. And this one is their brown ale, which is called Kama Citra, made with American citra hops and three different types of British malt, rated at 96 on rate beer as well. And if you've watched my channel before, you will know that I love brown ales, especially American brown ale. So to have a beer like this in my hand that is so highly rated, I'm very, very excited for. So I hope you guys enjoy the review as well and like I say go and check out Barley Wine and also Ull Boutique in, in Copenhagen two really damn awesome beer shops so anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual web links are in the description below the brewery website and Facebook the link to my other beer here reviews that I'll do for you in the near future this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers incidentally and there's all the usual Facebook things down there the Facebook the Twitter and the untapped all the usual social Social media and if you do want to see more beer reviews please subscribe to the channel and to my Danish viewers do let me know some other Danish beers and breweries that you'd like me to have a look at the, the Danish beer is really awesome so I will try my best to get hold of the things that you recommend so anyway to tell you about beer here so beer here like I told you are a Danish gypsy brewery and they were founded by Christian Skovedal Andersen back in 2008 and he'd been home brewing for over 15 years and previously he worked at Ulfabriken before he started up beer here by trade he was actually a programmer but he and his friend Martin Larson established Ulfa Breken back in 2004 as a side business to their programming work and it really began to take off but soon after Christian decided to leave and establish beer here and he states quite firmly the main reason for this was the fact that he didn't like business and having um, having his own employees and stuff like that so he, he decided to go for the gypsy brewing method which incidentally proved very very profitable if you like for Toyo and McKellar but apparently his favourite hop is the Nelson Sauvine because it combines the American fruitiness and also the European spicy character and he's particularly interested in low alcohol beers as well and a lot of the beers are brewed at Sogord's Bregerie in Aalborg in Denmark and also at the Profbrauerei in Lochriste Hefte in Belgium which is a very popular destination for gypsy brewers as you may already know and Christian is also involved with the Beerwerk project in South Africa so a very very exciting brewery as I said the guys who I've spoken to in Denmark really really rate these beers and hope Hopefully you should start to see them a bit more further afield soon. As I say, if you go and check out the rate beer profile for these guys, so many of their beers are rated well into the 90s and as I always say, rate beer very rarely leads you wrong when it comes to craft beer. So despite being a gypsy brewery though, they do have a bit of a kind of core range. This is the Executioner, the Lupulus, Dead Cat, Amistout, Dark Hops, Hoptilus, uh, Wicked Wheat and also Pale Hops. They've got their four seasonal beers too and they do have quite an extensive range of special beers and with them being a gypsy brewery they do a lot of collaborations and they do a lot of kind of experimental brews as well so some very exciting things to come from this brewery and like I say if you come across one of their beers pretty much pick a style and they're all very highly rated so I'd be very surprised if you don't like the beer that you try. Just pick a style you enjoy and you will I'm sure enjoy it. So I'll just let you have a quick look at the artwork on this one. This one is a 7% brown ale. It's hopped with only American citra hops so you have some nice kind of quite complex tropical fruit things going on but it's got a malt base of three different types of British malts. There's, bar there's British barley, chocolate and caramel malt in this one. So I'll just check that you're seeing that artwork there. Apparently Christian hand draws all of the labels that go on these beers and they've usually got quite kind of crazy characters and I have to admit with this one when I was in barley wine I'm sure I brought this one in barley wine it was actually the artwork that attracted me to the beer then I saw it was a brown ale and um, I recognized that it was a brewery that had been recommended to me so I thought why not so yeah very nicely done I have to commend uh, to commend him on his artwork actually that's really cool I'll steam the label off this one and keep it I'm sure but you can see plain bottle cap on this one here and it does tell you on the side product of Denmark and I can't read the Danish for you like some other people might be able to but I think it just says basically it just says it's got yeah, three types, four types of British malt in it citra hops, um, caramel rye bread and chocolate flavours with um, some aromatic grapefruit, melon and apricots as well 
and yeah it's well balanced and well hopped and yeah very nice malty flavour as well so my Danish is better than I thought I can speak a bit of Swedish but not so much Danish but we'll get this beer out and into the glass anyway so a 7% American style brown ale very excited for this one so yes you can smell the fruitiness off that just as you open it but you can see a nice kind of smoky opening on this beer but my sort of love affair if you like with the brown ales goes back to the Brooklyn Brown which was the very first one I tried and I just I remember trying this beer and just thinking oh you know wow what is this and then obviously that sort of opened in the craft beer world things like that open up a can of worms for you and you discover a whole new style of beer and of course I really do like dark beers my favorite beers are probably the Rauch beers and this of course is a kind of natural progression from there but as you can see this beer has poured a really nice sort of kind of reddish mahogany colour actually it's got quite a bit of coppery character to it there's a solid two finger frothy kind of cream coloured head on this one there's quite a bit of sediment visible in this beer as well if I put it over the light I can see quite a lot, a lot of sediment if I put my fingers behind it there is a degree of transparency but the colour is quite distinctly opaque but there is a lot of little sediment particles floating around in this one maybe it's just been in the fridge a little bit too long it's maybe been in the shop for a little while actually but it says it's good until October 2017 so yeah it will still be a good beer if I put my fingers behind it there you can't see the transparency so well but it does look like a pretty awesome beer so let's have a look at the aroma on this one before we get stuck in so without shoveling it up too much there's a big citrusy hoppy character coming out of this beer of course as I said it's only hop with the citra but you can get some nice more juicy tropical fruits in there a lot of the the tropical fruit that you can get from some of these hops comes out as being quite sort of sour grapefruitiness but there's a bit more complexity to this one it comes across as quite juicy so we'll sugar it up and see what else we can get out of it oh yeah when you sugar it up a bit more you really start to get the malt backbone out of the beer there's some nice almost rye bread characters coming out of this one you can really get the rye bready character coming out of this beer. There's some sweet chocolate and quite a sort of toasted caramel, actually. The caramel on this one really does smell quite toasted, I think. But that only comes out when you sugar it up a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Big barley bready character, big rye bread character, it almost smells like. Always reminds me of German rye bread. But yeah, some nice sweet chocolate and quite a toasted caramel element. But there's more complexity to the tropical fruits, like I say. I'm getting a little bit of a sort of... It's almost like it's like mangoes and apricots that are coming out of this one. It's the sort of juicier tropical fruits for me. There is a little bit of the sort of grapefruit, passion fruit kind of thing. But for me, it's more about a sort of juicier grapefruit. Or apricot, or juicier mango or apricot, sorry. But yeah, really quite interesting aroma. Not the most pungent you're going to come across right enough but definitely quite complex for a brown ale and it's definitely going to be an Amer more of one of these kind of fruitier west coast American brown ales this beer so yeah that's enough on the aroma let's get stuck into this beer so this is the Kama Citra an American style brown ale at 7% from Beer Here a gypsy brewery from Denmark Skål Ooh, that is nice that is damn good this beer Mm. as I always say sugar the beer around your palate and let your whole palate adjust to it before you start to dissect the flavour too much but there is a lot of flavour in this beer and I have to say it is very well balanced sometimes these brown ales they can lean too far to the hops and they can lean too far to the malt this one gets it spot on for me this is really nicely done you know just just without thinking too much about it you can see why this beer is so highly rated and I can see why these guys at Barley Wine and at Ul Boutique and recommended me this brewery very very good stuff mm. yeah this one finds the perfect balance between the nice fruity characters and the malt the malt flavors in the beer it's, it's no other way to describe it, it is a beautiful beer just put a little bit more in the glass just top it up for myself but yeah, the lingering aftertaste in this beer is definitely a sort of that big bready character that sort of English, almost 
roasted bread cards. It's like the top of a well-fired loaf from the baker's. That's what's lingering in the middle of my palate. There's a bit of sweet chocolate in there and a bit of caramel, but it is quite a toasty, bready character that just lingers there. As you move out towards the edge of the tongue, there's a bit of dryness building on the palate, and you'll just feel that before you move into the hoppy areas of the palate. Mmm. It's a nice, quite oily mouthfeel as well. Mm. And that suits it perfectly, I have to admit. Really, can't compliment this beer enough. So let's think a bit more in depth about the flavour. Mm. I would say it starts off more malty, this beer. For me, the thing that lingers in the flavour until your palate adjusts is that really dark roasted bready character that comes out of this one. That's what dominates the palate initially, but as the mouth starts to adjust to this beer, that's when you can pick up the more kind of complex fruity notes in the beer. Hmm. The interesting thing about this, usually brown ales have a bit of earthy hop character in the back of the palate. That's not there with this one. You don't really get earthy character from from the uh, the citra hop. The citra hop gives you a really big kind of complex tropical fruit flavour. You usually get like uh, grapefruit, some passion fruits, pineapples, lychees, uh, melons and all of these things. That's the kind of flavours you can expect from the citra hop. But they've actually managed to counter that pretty well with this malt base. The, the, the roasted character just sits at the very back corners of your palate. The malt base just spreads out that little bit further, I think, and it's really a nice kind of little quirk to the beer. The hoppy character is actually very smooth and very juicy. There's not even so much dryness from a kind of floral or aromatic character, or even grassiness in this one. It's, it's, it's very interesting just because the mouthfeel is quite different, but it's full of flavour, this beer, a lot more than the aroma would have you think. Hmm. Yeah, there is a little bit of dryness from the hops, incidentally. It comes out just in the last part of when the liquid's actually on your tongue. But if you just go behind the very front curve of the tongue, you'll feel from this, there is a nice kind of oily, juicy bubble in there. There's a bit of grapefruit in there that just underpins the beer, but for me, the fruity characters are a bit more juicy than that. There's a sort of slightly mangoey, slightly apricot flavour in there, probably dominated a little bit more by the apricots, I would think. Yeah, the, the tropical fruit in this one really is a lot more juicy. And I, I think there's a little bit of mango and a little bit of apricot coming out there. There's maybe, you know, something like lychees or melon coming out of this beer too. I've tried to train my palate a little bit by making fruit juices and there's, a, there's definitely a little bit of a sort of melony or kind of lychees, sort of that more ready tropical fruit flavour coming out of this beer. You can just take that behind the very front curve of your tongue. And as the beer progresses a bit, you do get a little bit more of a kind of grassy character around the front of the palate there, but it is very smooth and it suits the, the malt profile on this beer very well, actually. A lot of the old English beers do have that kind of lighter, grassier, and slightly earthy hop character. This beer almost combines the English and the American style um, American style brown ales quite well actually and it's really nice I mean I can see exactly why it's so highly rated there's a lot going on in this beer mm. it's fair to say with this one too there is a good bit of citrusy character in there maybe I kind of there is a, a bit of floral aromaticity in that it comes out a bit later and particularly in the aftertaste actually you can feel around the front kind of curves of your tongue there, you can feel just that bit of floral aromaticity building in this beer. Really nicely done and there's a, there's a, a lot of different flavours are coming at you at different points in the taste of this beer, so do be aware of that. This is a complex beer and you should think about it a little bit and try and pick up all these little different quirks to the beer, but the main point of this review is, this is a damn awesome beer and on the basis of this one, with it being one of my favourite styles, I'd love to go and try some of their stouts or some of their IPAs and stuff like this and just see how they are. A barley wine, I think, from these guys would also be pretty damn awesome. This, I find as well that as my palate's adjusting to this beer, the sweetness of the chocolate and the, the sort of toasted character of the caramel is building a bit and you can almost detect a little bit 
of a nutty character coming out of this beer too. It's, it's very nice. That's the main point of this review. In terms of the mouthfeel, yeah, this one is mid-bodied. It's got quite a smooth carbonation. At the same time, it's a little bit oily. It's not as thick as some of the English brown ales can be. The cask ales actually. It's sort of midway between what you would get from an American bottled beer and a sort of English old English cask beer. It meets somewhere in the middle and that suits the flavour profile of the beer as well. There's some nice juicy fruity character like I was saying, the tropical fruit in there. I think there's a bit of citrus dryness comes out in the aftertaste too. The beer in the aftertaste it does you do have a bit of dryness. The hop character for me is quite smooth and quite juicy. It builds to be a bit drier in the aftertaste but the malt base in this beer is where a lot of the dryness is actually. That kind of almost well fired kind of smoky character that just sits in the back in the back corners of the palate too. That's nice, but there is a, an element of sweetness to the malt base too. So as you can probably gather with all I'm telling you about this beer, there's a hell of a lot going on in this flavour. So you know I love these big complex beers and you know this one certainly hasn't disappointed me. This is a style that I really enjoy and I wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. If you love a brown ale, this one really is a combination of the English brown ales and the American brown ales. It's beautifully done and on the basis of this beer I would highly recommend the brewery and the guys I spoke to in Denmark couldn't speak highly enough of these the, this brewery either so probably one that you really do want to try, try. If you enjoy Toil and Mikeller, if you enjoy their darker beers I can see you enjoying this one a lot so don't be scared to go and check it out and do let me know if you try this beer yourself where you're drinking it actually it's been really cool to do another Danish brewery and hopefully I can return fairly soon so as I say go and check out uh, check out the guys at beer here really some really good beers I've heard very good things let me know where you're trying this beer as well and as always in the comment section below let me know your own thoughts on this beer Always interesting to hear from you guys. There will be more Danish reviews for you coming up. Until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out my social media things too. But most importantly, go and try some of the beer here beers. And don't hesitate, for those of you in Denmark, don't hesitate to let me know some Danish beers to have a look at. The Danish beer I've tried has been really awesome. But again, thank you for watching my beer review. Until the next one, slander just now and go and check out beer here. And check out all the links in the video description. Slander just now.